And finally this week, we're kicking off a special season of travel show stories from South Africa. Over the next month, we'll meet some amazing people who call the country home and learn a little bit more about life there. And we're starting by heading to the small town of Darling, two hours drive north of Cape Town, to meet a homegrown comedy cultural icon and performer who now runs a visitor attraction where he gives his own unique take on South Africa's past, present and future. Hello, my name is Ivita Besaitnet and I'm talking to you from the main road of Darling, which is right here on the west coast of South Africa. You see behind me the name of my boulevard, Evita Besaitnet Boulevard. I'm on the GPS, yes. I have my own boulevard. Margaret Thatcher never had a boulevard. I think through the theatre I realised that my life as a white South African was wrong. Something was not decent about the way we were living. But now we must look forward. Look at us here. Here we are in Darling on a Sunday. People in a state of civil war do not come to Darling for lunch on a Sunday. Because we are not in a state of civil war. It was extraordinary in 1975 doing my first female character and it was illegal to wear feminine, female clothes. And I just realized that breaking those laws were part of the survival, but breaking it through laughter, it was like taking that crystal and dropping it on the cement floor. <laughs> um, that's where the audiences started enjoying me because they realized they could laugh. The government of the day became my best script writers. Scotty, uh, that is God Save the Queen. We are a republic, there are no queens in South Africa. <laughs> Here you are at Evita Se Perron, of course Perron is Afrikaans for station platform because this used to be the old darling station. Behind me is our arts and craft centre, Evita's A and C. There is our restaurant, bar and theatre. And then I'm very proud of our museum slash nauseam, meaning some people love it and some people hate it. Walala wasala. Yeah, that's my first cosa phrase that Nelson Mandela taught me. Walala wasala. You snooze, you lose. <laughs> well, here we are in Burassic Park, and we have the gravy train here, as you can see. I really celebrate the fact that we are 21 years into a democracy that I think is pretty good considering where we come from. I try to reflect where we come from to just make them aware of how easily bad politics can reinvent itself. And then of course Eugène Tablanche, who at the time was the big hope for the right white wing, kept on getting drunk and falling off his horse. So he has fallen off his horse and is lying behind here. So I really think that if there's something I can contribute to the future, it is to cook for reconciliation. And I'm doing that in the Tully House. I've put the ANC on a diet, especially the cabinet. What? <laughs> I mean, you look at a fat politician, you immediately think of the thin voter. I will not be politically correct because till I was 50 years old, apartheid was politically correct. So toughies, I'm not going to do it. Um, and so I do uh, hopefully offend people, but not all the time. That's too exhausting. <laughs> I learned to shorthand in my one-man shows during the early 1980s, knowing that I, if I left the stage, they could get me. They were waiting behind the curtain. So I would bring all my costumes onto the stage with me and change in front of the audience. And that's become my style. I still do that. I put things together as a sort of a collection for people to laugh at. But then eventually we found out that it wasn't funny. The humor actually was at their fear of the past and the memories of the past. For example, a wonderful picture Winnie Mandela sent me in the middle of the 1980s in which she wrote, Dear Mr. Ace, the day you do me on stage, please look like this. And I do. Uh, she also used to send me messages from Nelson Mandela when he was imprisoned. And then, of course, this was one of my favorite pictures, dressed as Evita next to Nelson Mandela after she interviewed him 
for a television program and when I said to him, Mr. Mandela, do you remember what I looked like without her hair? And he said, no. And I said, shall I take off the hair? And he said, yes. And I took off Evita's wig and he said, oh no, please put it back on. Laughter was the legacy of Nelson Mandela in my life. Wait for next year before you go to Disneyland. Come to us first because we've more fun. We've got some fabulous people in this country. On every level of our society, there's nothing like the real thing. To really smell the air, to smell the vineyard, to listen to the dog <laughs> barking. Um, and it, it is, you just got to come and just enjoy it for yourself and drive down the Evita Besednet Boulevard and, and just enjoy a town called Darling, Darling. <laughs>